What's going on you guys? So I wanted to do a first impressions of a recent game that came out by Playdeck and GMT Games, which is Fort Sumter. I'm a little late to this. I'm about like a week late since release, but I wanted to kind of give it a try. It's $6.99 on the App Store. I just bought it and I want to kind of give it a go. All right. Uh, no. So let me make sure the volume's good to go. <clears throat> Remotes, play offline, online, and settings. So let's take a look at settings, see what we got here. So actually, before we start, I actually want to go through the tutorial because I've never played the board game of this. So let's actually hit that up. I'm mean, brand new to this. I did play the previous version of. of... All right, so the Fortune Sumter is a two-player game hitting the units against the secessionists in three rounds of political maneuvering, culminating in the finance crisis preceding the outbreak of the Civil War. Victory points are gained during each uh, round and at the conclusion of the final crisis based on the control of various map spaces. The player with the most victory points has successfully galvanized their side for war and wins the game. All right, so those are the victory points. Okay, cool. I'm gonna play the Union side. Each round begins with the two players being dealt four strategic strategy cards and two objective cards. Of the two objective cards. I really love that they added that stuff. It adds Mm, I love that. A lot of adds a little a bit of more immersion there. Of the two objective cards, you pick one and put the other card not chosen back in the objective deck. You can take a closer look at any card by tapping on it. Try it now with the four pickings objective card. Okay, which is one of these guys. Choose a player. Because they're aligned to the strategy in your cards, only three cards are picked around, so they are individually very critical to how things evolve. Alright, Players will now take turns playing three of the four strategy cards from their hand. This guy is the card's token value. The color of this value box denotes which side has the option to play the event instead of taking the card's token value. The text on the strategy card describes the event that the card implements. If the color of the value box in the upper left corner matches your faction, you can choose to play the event. Add up to three tokens to unlimited spaces or roll to two tokens from the one on the space, okay? Our southern Our brethren have done grievously. They have rebelled and have attacked, attacked their, their father's, father's house, house and their loyal, loyal brothers. brothers. They, they must, must be punished, be punished and brought, brought back. back. But this is the hard point of the rest of my heart. Alright, Devin and Fox is you and Spencer, you can have a choice whether to use a strategy card for its two value that allows placement of two tokens in the space on the map or to play for its union and friends. Some spooky audio in the background. It sounded like a little kid. To play a strategy card like that. Play a strategy card, drag it from your hand, banners appear that indicate the real option of playing the card, right? Drop the card onto the play event option. So I have to the value. Map spaces are divided into four crisis dimensions, indicated by color and icon combination. The session of critical elements, critical opinion. Each crisis dimension has three map spaces. The player controls a crisis they control or create spaces. Control of a crisis.
closest measure of what one hundred falls. One place to go on the map of all that must enter the octave and pull the four to the return of the places. Crash. At the beginning of every game where the player has any tokens in their token pool, so each player's first one will come from the closest track. That's starting from the highest number in space and return to the level of zero. Place two tokens in a federal arsenal. Okay. The four pickings. The three tokens you place came from the 15, 14, and 13 on the crisis track. Your opponent has played the Republican Party from their hand as first strategy. So that's what the sessionists did. Your opponent's only choice is to use a card for its value to place two tokens on the map. Then you can always play a card for its upper left value to place tokens onto the map, but if you can only use the event, it is your color blue for our units and gray for secessionists. Although none of this have been seen yet in this game, either player can use event cards with half gray, half blue value boxes. Place two tokens in the newspaper space. Your opponent's token pool began the game empty, so two tokens were removed from the. Alright, so we're gonna play. So we're gonna play its value, which is two. Since your token pool is still empty, these tokens will come from the crisis track. Hmm. Place the first token in Fort Sumter so that you, you control the armaments. Crisis dimension. Place the second token in the federal arsenals. It's a pivotal space. Each of the four crisis dimensions on a pivotal space into the social space. So I'm going to boost the item just a little bit. Each round after both players have a three strategy card plays, each player controlling a pivotal space can move or remove up to two tokens across all the spaces into the crisis dimension. With this card play, you are aiming for control of the armaments dimensions through the controls of the federal arsenal space. So I'm getting a, an idea. Now, mind you, I had a couple of beers. I'm on coffee right now, so like my brain is at like 50% plus I was working all day. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, your opponent plays for for the seeds for its events. This event will help them. The Sam Houston, which is going to be the one on the left, will event will limit you to placing tokens in Texas, which will look like it will block your token from controlling the succession. However, they will have another card to play in addition to border states, bonus to counter that move. Since the political dimension is for MC, let's use two ways to to place tokens there. Place all three tokens in a Washington space. This will give you pivotal control for the political dimension. We'll see how we can use that to control the other uh, spaces and dimensions after your opponent plays their final card for that round. Okay. 
One, two, three. The pressure track has three colored zones, which is yellow, orange, and then red. The first of these three zones is the escalation zone, which gives two bonus tokens when breached. Nice. The tokens you just placed on the map came from 9, 10, and 8. After these tokens are moved to Washington, the escalation zone has been breached. The two bonus tokens from the escalation zone are moved into your token. Human board. action can be modified to some extent, but human nature cannot be changed. Nice. This session always gets the last strategy card to play for the first round. Thereafter, the player with the most points goes first. If the points are tied, the player goes first. They could use the value of the card to place one token in Fort Sumter in an attempt to deny the armaments that mentioned victory points. However, this would be a poor place since you control the federal arsenal of space. We'll see how shortly how we'll see shortly how control of the pivotal space will allow you to maneuver a second token to Fort Sumter stat a reestablishment of control. So you put in border states and text. They decided to play to use the plantation class event to lock up this session to mention victory points. Removing two more tokens from this session, Crisis Track had breached the escalation zone. The two bonus tokens are placed into the session token pool. Okay. Okay, so it's gonna be held into the end of the game. Little space bonus. Now that all your strategy cards have been played for the round, it is time for the pivotal spaces space actions. Since the story is still tied, the main player makes the pivotal space move first. It allows me up to two tokens among spaces in the crisis dimension, or to remove two tokens from the crisis dimensions. This can either this can affect Every either your tokens or your tokens. Every slaveholder is a man stealer. By no precedent, no example, no law, no compact, no purchase, no bequest, no inheritance, no combination of circumstances is slave holding right or justifiable. You also control the crisis dimension, so you will gain a victory point even if you choose not to make any move, but it's still advantageous to move a token. Move or remove one token of arguments. Uh, your opponent controls the newspaper pivotal space. They only have two tokens that Christ mentioned. So the pivotal space bonus won't allow them to gain that victory point for the Christ mentioned. They choose not to make any moves in that dimension. The opponent also Democracy controls the border states to pivot place. They already control all three the succession skin. spaces, so they choose not to change the position of any of those tokens. Do you like the animation? Really cool. I like that. Any pivotal space bonus have been played. Victory points are awarded for each crisis dimension. Your opponent receives one victory points for a control of all three succession, which is going to be the border states one, right? all three which in the armaments right? okay so I control all three of the armaments so he got one because he controls the border states right there's three in there I control I received one victory point control of all three oh, of the armaments I shouldn't get also another victory point for northern states Montgomery and Washington right After Christ's Minish, the two secret objectives are revealed. The player who controls either objective space gains one it's victory. Be the people, not 
we the white people, not even we the citizens, not we the privileged class, not we the high, not we the low, but we If you play this card and control the four points that you may remove up to three tokens from the unknown space or remove up to one token from any space. Nice, that's pretty cool. The opponent revealed this bear is a secret objective, and since they control that space, they also gain one victory point. Okay. Next, you get a moment the objective event on your secret card. If you gain the victory point four, the, uh, your opponent can never use that moment even if they win the victory point. Object objective events are played starting with the first player since you are the leader of the region. Fort Pickens objective allows you to either remove three tokens on your own or opponents from all of this or remove one token from any space. Since your opponent is having a token on you, let's just remove the same token from the text of Any board game, or well, it's a digital board game, <laughs> just like any board game, it's not going to be one, two, three. Um, it kind of goes based upon board game learning curve. Which playing any board game, it takes it takes a little bit. You know, if if you are a board game enthusiast, you know what I'm talking about. Mm. All right. So I'm, I'm assuming the tutorial is going to like. Let me uh, walk and then run in um, round two and three. All right, so I control the political dimension. Uh, the northern state houses is a better uh, a choice for your objective in this round. Your opponent controls the pivotal space in the political opinion, a public opinion will make it more difficult for you to be in control of the state assembly space at the end of the round. Interesting. Drag northern state houses from your hand. Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves. If you play this card and control the Northern State House space, you may have to remove two tokens from the political public opinion spaces. Which is going to be the icon or the that one. Which I don't think they have any. Thing to remove. Actually, I can't. Remember. They have these things. So I guess let's play this. Regular arm event only allows placement into the armaments dimension, so let's place the last token into the pivotal space. Uh, Louisiana succeeds from their hand at the first. There are two antagonistic elements of society in America freedom and slavery. Freedom is in harmony with our system of government and with the spirit of the age. 
For your second strategy card play, let's use the naval lease defense. With justice and with humanity. This action you use the last token from your token pool and two tokens from seven and six spots on the crisis track. Two tokens are placed. The tension zone has been reached. You receive three bonus tokens from the tension zone. And in addition, when a player breaches the tension zone for the first time in the game, the opponent is allowed to place the peace commissioner token on any map space. Any tokens being placed in or removed from that space so it kind of secures their spot there. There are a few event cards that will allow placement of the Peace Commission, but you don't currently have them, have one of them in your current hand. This means your opponent is certain to control the newspaper space and the public opinion pivotal space bonus at the end of the round. Session conventions from their hand at the second strategy card of the round. You have two choices left for your final strategy card of the if round. Calhoun's Legacy will allow you to place only one token. Season Federal Armors will allow you to place to four tokens. It is that which asserts the this. exclusive right of free people to form and adopt their own fundamental law and to manage and regulate their own. Move up to four of your tokens from any armament space to your token pool. Add up to four tokens to secession and or public spaces. Hmm. You have three tokens in your token pool. If you place four tokens with this event, you will take the token from the five space on your crisis track, which is going to be over here. This will breach the final crisis zone. The first player in the game to breach the final will receive four bonus tokens. We'll also lose one victory point. Ah, I see. Victory points are valuable, so that's a steep price to play. Second player to breach the final price will only receive two bonus tokens, but there is no victory point penalty. Ah, interesting. So there's pros and cons. Seizing federal armies, uh, armories provides a strong event that you could take advantage of here. Before placing any tokens, you are able to remove up to four tokens from the map. Since your opponent has only one strategy card play left in the shroud, we can uh, pick up a few of the excess tokens we place in the armaments. Dimension remove two tokens from Port Pickens. One from Sumter. Okay, cool. So, the point is not to let the opponent breach the final crisis zone. You do get more tokens, which is cool, but, you know, you take a, a hit in the victory points, which is the whole point of the game, to get more victory points. Tap the button button. Now you can place up to four tokens in succession or public spaces to deny them that victory point. Your opponent is to is in a good position to control both of these dimensions at the round, so let's try to prevent that. Yes, we definitely do that. So I want to hit that up, put one there. No Only put two more there. I figure putting it in state assemblies. With, with one strategy card play left around, your opponent can still make a play to control either the secession or public space, a public opinion dimension, but they won't be able to control both of them. It's 
instead of going for the victory point from controlling the secession or public opinion, uh, your opponent chose to remove control of the armaments. Ah, uh, interesting. Preventing you from gaining a victory point for this round. Ah, son of a fracker. Interesting. Okay. I really like this game, honestly. You control the political dimensions, pivotal space, which is the bell. Yeah, I definitely do that. So you may move two tokens within that dimension. You only have one token in your space. Move them in and these tokens you cause you to increase control. Definitely don't want to do that, so. Second move from the secession of mentioned pivotal space to relocate one of the uh, tokens from the south space into the vacant uh, Texas space. They now control the secession of mentioned other game of victory points in their rest. The opponent used a, a public opinion uh, the mentioned pivotal space. That's a mouthful right <laughs> Let's just call it uh, DPS. Sounds easier. Uh, bonus to remove two of your tokens from the abolitionist space. Two because I got the political, or well, three, and I got the, all the armaments. So another one. I'm still ahead of in the game. I mean, someone's, you know, the computer's holding my hand, so, but take what I can get. You reveal northern state houses as your secret objective. You can control can that space. You gain one victory extent. point. Nice. But human nature cannot be changed. That's awesome. And he got deep spout, right? So he gets one big point. Uh, ah, okay. Two tokens from political or public opinion. So I'm thinking abolitionist. Yeah, you're ahead of me on that one. And state assemblies. And he kicked me out of... So your opponent needs a deep south to remove. Man, he really wants Fort Sumter, doesn't he? If both players have breached the final crisis zone, the game skips the remaining rounds and goes straight to the final crisis. In this case, neither player has breached the final crisis, so we just need to run. So, the final crisis is the red man over on the red man. Player, uh, the players are again dealt four strategy cards and two objective cards. Washington is the better choice for the objective card this round. Because abolitionists... Uh, well, I have that too. Your opponent has control of newspapers with the peace commissioner. So controlling the abolitionist space for the end will be difficult. Ah, oh, that's right, because it's... By we need not argue that no person can be good to go. To submit to such Players will again take turns playing three of the four strategy cards from their hand. I'm gonna go first. I can also for two points. We're gonna have really one and both have. Let's play one of the low value cards, holding the higher value ones, only to respond. Oh, okay, good idea. So, Pensacola, add up to toke tokens to the Fort Pickens space, or remove one opposing token from the Fort Pickens space. You can only place one token, so let's reinforce our political position, our political dimension.
really need that because the Peace Commissioner of Southern Senators resign from their hand as their second strategy card of the round. What does that give them? And they play the uh, event or are they playing the value? Your opponent used the Southern Senators event to take Two to to place two tokens in abolitionist space, and one token in the state assembly space. They are now control of the public dimension. So, what are they controlling? They're controlling the stars, which I forgot which uh, the name of that is, and they're also controlling the public opinion. I'm only controlling the um, uh, the political one, and half of the armaments one, which puts me in a bad spot, really bad spot. Technically, they're winning, even though I have more victory points. You have two succession events remaining in your hand. The one with the higher value also has the final crisis mention that you have the least chance of, of impacting during the final crisis. So let's play George to succeed. Remove up to two opposing tokens from one succession or public opinion. I want to do the public opinion. So let us play the... Uh, again, if you play the value... I would have loved to just remove their stuff. That isn't enough to control Fort Sumter, but you can, e you can equal your opponent there, place two tokens in Fort Sumter. I would have went for the public opinion. Your opponent plays Jefferson Davis from their hand uh, as their third strategy card of the round. What does that give them? Oh, shh. Ah, son of a fracker. The two tokens came from six and seven, so... The opponent has breached the final crisis zone. Four bonus tokens will be added to their table. But they lost one victory point. Alright, so I have sympathy at three, but. It is the fate of my soul. You can draw the armaments and pivotal space. So you can move the two tokens your opponent just placed in Fort Sumter. Move the token to the token pool. Token pool button. Where's the token pool button? I'm tapping here. Oh, there we go. I had to click the, the guy's hand. Good to go. Your opponent receives one victory point for the secession side. Yep, he's also going to get another one for the... Oh, well, I'm going to get one for that. What else? He's going to get one for the public opinion, right? See, he's catching up. Stay out in the last round. The Washington objective allows you to remove up to two tokens from the political or public opinion space. Nice. This is a world of compensation. And we're at the final and he crisis. Would be no slave 
must consent to have no slave. Those he swears who deny freedom to others yeah, three card final deck, deserve uh, final it not for themselves. Then both players simultaneously reveal one card at a time. It's important to note that the only information on the card that is used in a Final Crisis Dimension uh, Final Crisis Dimension location card. The card's value or event has no effect on the Final Crisis. Let's see how the resolution works after that. Select the Charleston card as your first Final Crisis card. Select the same Houston armaments as your second. Add up to three tokens in succession spaces. Once both players have ordered their final crisis cards, the players flip their cards one at a time. Each player will get an effect based on whether the final crisis dimension location is a match. So, your first card reveals Charleston. Your opponent reveals Minutemen. And so he got Armaments, so he's going to put in some When the crisis dimension on the revealed card does not match, it's the colors. We then each player starting with the player with the highest score you. can move up to two you tokens for any map space or the token pool in any, the any com combination on the final card's color. You will have the higher score so you will go first. You may move up to two tokens in the public spaces. Okay. Let's move two tokens from your token pool to the newspaper. Paper. Your opponent may now move up to two tokens in the price on their revealed armaments card. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I got Sam Houston. She gives me uh, again the price is match for match. Each player move up to two tokens in the price is dimension on their card. The tutorial. <laughs> All right. All right, that's cool. I like that. All right, so as a tutorial, a couple of things I wanted to come away from it. 
Pros and cons as a first impression is one, really love the music. Really love the background audio. Big props to GMT uh, Games and Playdeck. I really love those audio vocals of, I'm assuming uh, it's you know, of the uh, of numerous. Uh, I really love the vocals from the, uh, from the political figures at the time throwing in uh, throughout the uh, actual tutorial throughout the game. I thought that was pretty uh, nice touch. So big props to GMT Games for that. The other couple of things I wanted to kind of point out is I like the animations. I know it's, it's a small thing, but, you know, little things like that where it's nice and smooth, everything, you know, is smooth. There's no, I would say, lag or um, sort of uh, no stuttering or anything like that. It seems that they put a lot of work into making the game just very, very fluid. I like that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, learning curve, I would say it takes quite a bit. So I've been playing this for probably what 15 20 minutes, and I have a, a general good grasp on how it works. Um, I'm like right there, understanding the game. Like, I, I could I figured it out, but it needed a tutorial to kind of figure it out. Now, on a normal PC game, if I was playing like uh, Imperator or you know, a grand strategy game or any type of strategy game, and I actually had to play a tutorial, I would have been like, yeah, for me, you know, I feel like I should just go into the game. But this is not a normal game. This is a board game that's been digitized. So normally I would put that as a con, but I'm not going to do it in this aspect, mainly because as a board game, it's going to be a bit of a learning curve. You're not going to pick it up in three, four minutes and know how every facet of the game works. Like Imperator, I was able to pick up Imperator in five, ten minutes. This game, you need to kind of like be kind of... The tutorial has to hold your hand for a little bit to kind of get an idea of the rules. So if you played board games in the past, this is going to be like nothing new. And if you played Fort Sumter in the past, this is going to be just one, two, three for you. What else? Um... As a first-time player of Fort Sumter, I really like it. This is really cool. I do like how it's, you know, it, it's, it, it really is, it really cool. I really like the way, you know, you got these tokens and you got to uh, gain all these different uh, dimensions. And it's kind of like you're fighting with a computer to control this, but you have this, they're going to circumvent you on that. I really like that. It's a nice dimension to uh, this board game. Really cool. I, I do like the uh, map art. You know, I do like these little, uh, I would say cards, I would say, these mini cards here that are placed throughout the thing here. So a nice mix of colors and animations and uh, graphics, so I do like that. Uh, the rules, really cool, I like that. So overall, I really do like this game. For 6 dollars I'm very happy with it. Uh, I like the way the game plays. Um, I like the animations, I like the map. I just like all of it. Uh, I am trying to find something that's a con. I can't think of anything, honestly. You know, uh, there's a, another cool thing that I do like about this is that besides you can play offline, you can play online mode, so you can actually play other people. Uh, and I'm assuming it's going to be like PBEM, so play by email. So that's going to be kind of cool. Overall, for $6.99, I think this is a good value because not only can you play it offline, but you can play it online. Yeah, I really like it. Big props to uh, GMT Games and Playdeck. Really happy with this. And another big pro, guys, I want to add at the end here. This is available on iPad and iPhone. If you ever get stuck in a spot where you got like a half hour to an hour to waste, you can pick this game up and kill a lot of that. Awesome. I'm very excited. I'm very motivated. I'm happy with spending the $6.99. And I look forward to future titles. And I know I'm going to be playing this repeatedly. And yeah. Can't wait to play this in my life. Anyway, catch you guys in the next one.